Hello everyone. Today I have a millipede board that came in. Um, it came with the back plate and all of the hardware to hold the back plate on. And uh, I removed it. Um, and um, yeah, we want to fire it up and put it in test mode and see what we got. Hopefully everything works fine. And then uh, the customer would like me to install a millipede kit, which allows you to play centipede on it also. And uh, I need to clean up my bench too a little bit. So I'm gonna put you up on the camera and then we'll see where we are. And then I'll stop and clean up my workbench. All right, hang on. Okay, we're all hooked up. I'm going to put it in. Well, let's just power it up and see uh, in, in gameplay mode, see what we got. Okay, so it looks like it's in German, I guess. Um, and it's set for two coins, two plays, and we've got a we've got a graphics issue on the bottom. I don't know what that's about. All right, let's flip it over. That looks like a RAM problem of some sort. And let's uh, let's check it in test mode and see what we get. Okay. Yeah, it says German, free play. I don't know what 24 is. Uh, looks like it's set for five ships, hard spider, hard everything. And the EA ROM is is uh, not going to save scores. Well, I just touched the, the ROM and it reset. Make sure I got everything clean under the board. And it says PO, which is pokey zero. So maybe we have an error reading the dip switches. Maybe that's why uh, everything's set to hard and free play in German. Um, I don't know. Hold on. Let me let me put a different pokey in. I think P0 is the one at 4D on the inside of the board. I have a pokey here I use for all my testing. These things are super hard to find anymore. Let's see, I put the new pokey in uh, at 4D and let's see what we get. Oh, we're not even getting it to boot now. What? There we go. Well, it took care of the pokey issue, yeah, which is which changed all the dip switch selections. Now we've got easy side feed. Easy Beatles, four, um, four players per per game, and Easy Spider. And uh, let's see. Whoa, what is going on here? I'm getting a lot of resetting. Is that on the power? What's going on there? Let's see what happens if we change some dip switches. Maybe the board crashed. Well, nothing changed and I flipped a bunch of dip switches. Let's put them all back where we we had them before. Very odd. So this has got some problems. Maybe it's maybe it's just power. I'm gonna clean the, the fingers on this thing and, and try it again and see what we get. 
I'll also have to inspect the back of the board. Maybe there's a couple pins bent or something, because that was really odd. When I just touched the board barely, uh, I reset. Okay, now it's... Huh. Very, very interesting. What is going on here? Huh, I'm hardly doing anything to it. Okay, we'll clean the old pokey. We'll put that back in the socket and see if that's just bad legs or something. And uh, I'm going to clean the edge connector with some some um, uh, Scotch-Brite pad, and we'll see where we're at. I'll be back in a few. All right, we're back. You know what? I'm going to try a different headset here. Um, the one I have is corded, and so I'm going to try a Bluetooth one and see if we can uh, we can pair it up to the phone and use it. Hang on. All right, we're back, and I've, I'm using my new uh, Bluetooth headset. We'll see how this sounds for the rest of the video. All right, I clean the clean the edge connector, reseated everything here. You know, for years I've been using um. Uh, these are from Arcade Shop. This is Centipede to Gemma. And this is a Millipede to uh, Centipede Adapter. I remember when he first came out with these. It was, well, 2002, as you can see. And um, they work pretty well. I've used it on all my Millipede repairs and on my Centipede repairs. And, and uh, you know, that's when I, I decided a long time ago to, to just have Gemma on everything. Um... I, you know, I use, I'm a big fan of Bob Roberts, and he he showed how to build a test rig, and I just decided from then on, you know, everything I had was going to have an adapter. I mean, I did I did build my own adapter at first, you know, to get all the right voltages and everything else. You really need uh, you, you really need to get you know uh, have the the right circuits on here, and these do they they work really well. I don't know if they're still available, but they probably are. So, um, so far, I, I've also cleaned this uh, this pokey. This one that came back, it said it was bad. Um, I've matched I've matched all the dip switch settings to my dip switch settings on my board. I just have three and four on here. Uh, everything else I have off. On, on everything and then I've got three and four on here and I think oh I have three and four off everything else is on I hope that's right um, you know I really should test it check with my meter to make sure that I've got them right I I get confused with these whether on is up you know this way or, or off but I, I think on is well when the uh, line is down and, uh, you know, the other other direction is off. Anyway, uh, matched them all to this, and we'll see what we get. Should be in English. So let's take a look up on the screen. All right, time to power it on. And now I'm getting nothing. Uh-oh. What is happening? Oh. So we definitely got some kind of connection problem here. I don't think it's my uh, adapter because I, I use this adapter on everything else. Huh. I thought I cleaned this pretty well. So I cleaned the edge connector. Well, there we go. We're up. German. I guess I need to look up. Uh, what, where the, what the settings are because oh P0 is the pokey so it says the pokey is bad so I guess I'm going to have to put my pokey in here and we'll do that Oh, 
Okay, so I pressed on the CPU and, and it came up. So it looks like maybe I need to replace the CPU socket. Something else is wrong because I bet it's RAM. I bet there's a RAM issue here because I'm not sure what 24 means there. As I flip these dip switches, things should change real time and nothing's changing. Yeah, it's all the same. Well, let me flip pokies. I'll put, put the P1 in, the, in 4D. And we'll put my good pokey. Wow. One thing these sockets do on Atari boards, they really hold these chips in pretty well. Let's see what we get. Doesn't look like. Well, that's interesting. Sometimes we're getting beep codes, sometimes we're not. So we are seeing, whoops, interesting, all I did was flip a dip switch, what in the world? Okay, so that's off, so this way they're all off. Let's turn all the all the dip switches off. This just isn't a happy millipede board. Let's see. Could it be uh, sockets on the ROMs maybe? Nope. That's not making a difference. Looks like we got a whole bunch of stuck. Well, I don't know if they're all dip switches here. Whoa. Yes. All right. Well, now it says P0 is bad, which was the is was his good pokey. Wow. All right, what's going on there? All right. So I'm going to show you down here. Hold on. Back on the game board. Let's see what we're looking at here. Okay. I've been playing with the dip switches. They don't seem to make a difference in test mode. This pokey, sometimes it says good, sometimes it says bad. This pokey is known good. Uh, that's my pokey. Um, and so I think first thing I'm going to have to do is change out the socket on the C these, these three 40-pin sockets. These Atari sockets are just not in the best shape. We'll put a nice dual-wipe socket in each one. And... Uh, and we'll go from there. Hmm. 
I hate to I hate to change them out without knowing if that's going to fix them, but it's got to be something like that. Let's see. Here's some more. Put these pokies back in. Sometimes, sometimes this doesn't even boot. Right now, it's not. It's, there you go. Now it says P1 is bad. Okay. So now it thinks it's in Spanish. Oh yeah, because this pokey it's not reading. So it's not reading the dips properly. Um, whether they're on or off, it doesn't matter. All right, so we'll change this this out first. Half the time it boots, half the time it doesn't. I've got this new adapter that I wanted to try. This is just a this is a millipede uh, millipede jam adapter. It's from from a PCJunkie.net, but um, I tried putting it on and nothing happens. It won't boot the board, so I don't know if it's. Uh, I have to verify the pinouts before I use it. I may verify that before I uh, throw it back on the board or throw the board back on there. Anyway, um, I'm going to change this socket and we'll see if it, well, now it's coming up every time. So let me look here. Yeah, I just picked the board up a little and it resets. That shouldn't happen. Why is it resetting? I bet these sockets are bad. All right, we're going to change those first. See you in a bit. All right, I'm back. Uh, these sockets are just pretty horrific. After... After as many years as these been on, you know, they've been there since the 80s, and these were pretty, not the best sockets to begin with, so, you know, they, they never expected these games to last this long. I've said that many times, and, and it's true. Right, let me put this over here and get some light on this. I can see what I'm doing. So as soon as I'm done putting this on, I'll show you what's going to, as I was taking the pins off of this thing, they were just crumbling. I mean, they were breaking in half. Um, just by taking the solder off, they, half the pin would fall out. That was, you know, it's not like I'm, I'm being pretty gentle, but they were just, whatever metal they used for them is not was not the uh, the best, I guess. I think, I have no idea. It's got to be tin or something like that, but boy, they were brittle. And brutal. Brutal and brittle. All right, so. There's the new socket. Looks pretty good. And, uh, goes here fits right in so all of these little pins 
I don't know if you could see this or not, but they're, they're pretty, they, they would just split in half. They're supposed to look like this one, little solder tail, but you can see how corroded these are and how they would just split. So you finally got this socket off, you know, some of these, some of them, most of them held together, but there were a bunch that were just broken right at the, uh, at the um, base. So I wonder if that was kind of what was going on there. Well, I'll swap these two, but first I'm going to just plug this in, make sure the CPU is working right. And that it's booting and I'm not, you know, having to, uh, there we go. What the heck? Get back on there. There we go. All right. So let's look on the screen, see what we got. Okay, it boots right up now. So that's good. Let's see if it continues to. Oops. Yeah, much better. So all those pins were broken off right at the PCB. You wonder how that happens. Huh. So you can see it's changed our our um, our dip switches are reading a little better, but I still have P1 is bad and P1 is this pokey uh, the pokey at 5B. I'm gonna pull that out. Pop in my pokey and we'll see if it comes better. I gotta change those two sockets anyway, but. Uh, Let's just see if it makes a difference. Yeah, it's still not quite sure what to do. So, I wonder. Did that make any difference in our gameplay screen? No, we still got that line at the bottom. All right, a couple more sockets to change and uh, and we'll uh, take a look here again. The interesting thing is on the self-test, we're not hearing beeps. We did for a while, but I think that was the bad socket. And um, yeah, I'm not gonna be able to give him my pokey here. So I don't know what we're gonna do. Um, hopefully we can acquire one or he can. Um, all right, I'm going to change those two pokey sockets and we'll be right back. All right, we're back. Um, as you can see, these sockets were fun to take off the board. Anyway, there's another two. Let's plug her back in. And then we've got a couple pokies. I'm gonna try his again. You know, that looks a little filthy. really like the convenience of this Bluetooth uh, headset, but it ran out of, ran out of uh, juice already and it was fully charged. So um, that's what I get for getting a cheap one. Let's see. Okay, here's the two Pokey chips. Pokey one is here and Pokey zero is here. I put his back in just to see. Let's see if we get an error. Yeah, we still got that P1 error, which is this guy. 
Wow. Yeah, that really was hanging onto that socket. Let's see. That's my pokey. And let's see what we get. Okay, no pokey errors. So it doesn't show any errors. I get no beeps, nothing out of this guy. Let's see. Let's put it in game mode. Since we got two, two creditos. Uh, boy. That sounds terrible. All right, is it is it his pokey that's doing that? Boy, that sounded bad, didn't it? Okay, so maybe both these pokies are bad or just not making good contact. Let's try it again. Put my good one in the first one. And then his in the second socket. Let's see. Boy. That sounds pretty terrible, doesn't it? Sounds like we have a bad uh, LM324. Maybe on the audio, audio out. Hmm. Let's try this again. Yeah. It's still got some problems here. Oh, P1 now. Gosh. Okay, I'm going to have to separate his pokies here. That's the one. Okay, now they're good. Uh, I guess I'll have to look up some uh, dip switches to see what the, which are which. P1, bad again. Okay, free play Spanish. Hmm. I'm not seeing any coinage at all. Oh, there we go. Two credits minimum. Uh, free play. It's always on free play. What is going on there? Well, excuse me. German. All right, so at least it's reading these dips, which is here. And I think this one and that one, is it four and five? Hmm. Yeah. All right, so we still have some problems. I'm gonna have to think about this for a minute. Let me go grab the schematics and I'll, I'll come back as soon as I have some ideas. I've been playing around a little bit with these dip switches. 
I've got this one to work, so now it comes up in English. But this one, um, I just can't get any of these options to uh, to work. So there's something wrong physically, I believe, with that tip switch. So I'm going to put a different one in. These dip switches go straight to the pokey. So, um, you know, they go to a resistor to, uh, to pull up the, pull up the, um, pull up the output. And when you flip, turn them on, they actually ground one of the pins here. Whoa, excuse me. I need to get, you know, those other, hmm. sorry about the jiggling camera. It's, it's my headset cable. So I've got an extender coming that I can kind of tape down to the table and you won't, you won't have that problem anymore. All right. has to get up to 700. So what I did is I, I checked the continuity from these pins over to the pokey and they were good. Um, but the they were never grounding when they when they were open so they they never shorted across so something's wrong in there I don't know what it is. I haven't quite ever seen that before but I've seen bad dip switches. But the whole bank is bad, which is kind of odd. So trying to just work with one one problem at a time. Right now it's it's how come you know I wasn't sure if it was the pokey that was bad and the imp, you know the input part of the pokey or the uh, or the dip switches and it turns out I could ground it directly and it was fine. So Probably about time to to give a good uh, whoops give a good cleaning to this desoldering hand piece again. Whoops! Come on, Mike. Be careful. All right. Okay, I got a couple pins that just are not coming loose. There we go. That one's loose. So now it's just one pin. There we go. 
So we can test this. with a meter when they're they're like pushed down they should be oops what's going on oh they should be on Oh, that one is. Second one isn't. Let's turn them on. They're all on, so we should have a short directly across each one. Third one works. Fourth one. Fifth doesn't. Sixth doesn't. Seventh doesn't. Yeah, so it's definitely bad. All right, so we're going to put this, pop this one in, solder it in, set up our coin. Excuse me. Let's see. All right, this is pin one over here, so that should be on right now, yeah? Yeah. Yeah. All right. Okay. Do I want to do it that way? Or this is pin one or that that means on. I guess we'll just we'll leave it like that pin one. On is off. Okay, so they're all on right now. And I need my soldering. Station. I was gonna go look for these and remembered I had them in the in my chip drawer. I got these a long, long time ago. You know, I haven't used a whole lot. I think I got ten, and I still have four left. So it's been a long, long time. They are nice to have though. Okay, 550 is where we're at temperature wise. Let's see. This whole side is just a, a solid ground. And then there are individual signals on each pin on the other side. All right. Okay, so they should work now for sure. I threw my jacket on. I was ready to head out the door and go get these at the other shop, but uh, yeah, I don't need to now. All right, so let's turn it all on and I'll show you what we got. All right. Well, that's interesting. What's going on there? 
All right, so we have everything turned on. Look at that. Oh, cool. So free play works. Demo, this should be, we want one coin, one play. Uh, do I have a problem still over here? Maybe I do. Hard. Three, five, three. So when I turn, turn dip switch four over here, hmm. that's for the bonus. I may have to switch this other dip switch too, but uh, we finally got it. It's English, one coin, one credit, uh, easy spider, easy, easy everything. And let's see how it looks when we turn on the game. All right, much better. Let's see how the sound is. Wow. That's still terrible. And we've got a bunch of stuff stuck down at the bottom. I'm going to have to look at the play field. So I don't know if that's the pokey that's doing that. Let's pull it up. got good sockets now so the sound should be okay as far as the pokey goes okay the sounds better still not quite right let's see That's with the bad pokey in spot uh, P P0, I think it is. So let's put my known good pokey in there. I guess it's possible that he had two bad pokies and one's just bad sound output. And it doesn't show up and the test is bad. Oh, we got two coins, one play. Hmm, how did that happen? Wow, yeah, so we've got another bad pokey. Holy cow, I don't like that. Got two bad pokies here. Hold on, I'm going to go grab a tube of mine. I don't have very many left. All right, let's see. I've got one more pokey. We'll pop that in there. Let's put it up on the screen and see what we've got. Well, I have a sneaking suspicion this sound's going to be okay. Look, we got one coin, one play, so it's reading the dips right. There's one credit. Oh, we got it set to two credit minimum, huh? 
Well, that sound is still terrible. Credit minimum, where is that set? I think that's over here, isn't it? I better pull the manual up and find out. Okay. All right, so all we want on, on bank uh, B5 is pin, or is a dip switch to everything else needs to be off, which it is. And then, it's P8, which is this last dip switch setting. We want uh, one, to be on, nope, we don't care how many coin counters. Oh, I had that wrong, pin one and two. <laughs> okay, I got pin one and two working. So seven and eight uh, are the coin counter there, that's not right. Um, so, Seven tells how many, or eight tells how many coin counters. Seven is how many credits minimum. So seven. Ah. Well, why isn't it showing up on the screen? And we still got problems with the uh, number of... Um, Number of lives. There we go. Well, let's see now. What does it say? One coin, one play. That's what it's supposed to say. Let's see, one coin, one credit. All right, we got that now. So let's start a game. Yeah. Oh, that's terrible. All right, so we have an LM324 at uh, 11F. I'm gonna see if, that's, if that'll fix the sound. Could it be anything else? Maybe. Okay. I pulled the, uh, the ROMs out or the, oh, I see what happened. One of the proms has a leg. Pin one is just barely in the socket. It's been under like this. Whoops, it's been under. So I got to straighten that, put it back in. It was just barely making contact with the socket. So when I touched it, it stopped. These are going to be replaced with the kit anyway. 
Oh yeah, okay, that's all working again now. Hmm. You know, I might pull the tripod out to see if I can get this camera to be a little more steady while I while I have the headset on there. Okay, so everything seems to be working, but I have my pokies in there. That's that's a hundred bucks worth of pokies right there. They're expensive anymore, if you can get them. Now, the only other thing that's not working is the bottom of the board. We've got we've got an issue drawing the archer. And all that stuff down at the very bottom in that in that light or the olive green section of the of the screen. That might be fun to find. Let's go look at the schematics again. And let's find the motion object selector. Is that it? Color memory, color output, motion object control. That might be it. Or uh, there's the play field, microprocessor. <laughs> I think this is a motion object. Well, it's really player. Does it have a player object control? Microprocessor, address, decoders, high field or high, uh, high score. Play field is the, is the background, I think. And then motion object is everything that moves. So it's got to be motion objects, doesn't it? But it's only at the bottom, which is kind of bizarre. All right, so... Oops, let's see. According to these schematics, there's only a handful of parts there in this section. We've got some LS83s, 157, a 174, couple 83s. You know, uh, LS83s, I'm not familiar with them. I, don't, I haven't used too many LS83s. Let's see. Uh, and there's an LS20. So they start at 6H and 6J. And they are right here. Well, okay, I don't think that's it. Let's see, where else? What do we got here? Could be picture memory. I'm not sure. Let me dig it. Do do a little bit of dig around. I think we've got all the the inputs all working finally. Um, I'll do a little poking around. See see if there's any any uh, anything else I find. I'll be back in a few. All right. Well, I was uh, thinking about this. I just decided to change that LM three twenty four at eleven. Uh, what is it? Eleven F. And uh, see what we got. Hopefully the sound's cleared up. No. It's 
a little better. No, it's not. Oh, that's terrible. Okay. So. So it's got to be the capacitors in that section. Let's see. I've got uh, C37 and C38. Where are they? C43. Well, I don't even see these capacitors, so I'm going to have to think of... Oh, yeah, here we go. C... C34, 32, and 31. Um, I don't see any other capacitors, really. Um, C38 is just an 01. It's a little little filter cap. That's it. It's a 0.1. And then there's a 0.22 of C37. Huh. Oh, and here we go. Uh, there's a 100K resistor, and C36 is a 0.22 to ground. Where is that? Hmm. Well, you would think it'd be one of these larger caps, but... I'm finding C40, C25, C43, none of those. Huh. I'm not quite sure here because there is no, oh, there's another point. Yeah, there's. Yeah, on each of the pokies, there's a 0.22, if I can find it. Maybe one of those is bad. There's a 220 ohm resistor, drops down, feeds the, the LM324, goes through another 0.22 cap. Um... Well, it might be the capacitors on my adapter, and it might be okay. It's weird. All right. Hmm. Let me think about this. All right, I'm back. Uh, I had changed this... Uh, LM325 and looked at all the caps and everything was good for the sound. So um, it probably is these capacitors. This adapter has go had gone through my, uh, it had gone through some superheating over at my building. And so I think the amp, these two caps gave up the ghost. It's a 16 and a 470. Um, I think the 470 is bad. So I tried this other uh, Atari Millipede adapter. And um, this didn't boot up, and I didn't know why. I, uh, so I checked the pinouts, and this is version 1. So there was uh, this pin here, and on the back... Uh, On the back of this adapter, uh, this pin had five volts on it. It's supposed to be 12. And this pin had five, uh, negative five volts on it, and it's supposed to be 12. So um, once I cut those and jumpered 12 volts to them uh, properly, then, then it would boot. 
And, uh, you know, it's a nice little adapter. I, I, I like having just a single adapter instead of a couple. I, I never built one of these. I was going to, and I, I just never got around to it because I had something that worked, and I, I don't work on a lot of millipede boards. So, let's see. All right. So, let's see here. We've got, you know, every. The sound works great now. Uh, it's a nice little amp on there. I like that circuit. So I'm going to put you up on the monitor and then we'll, uh, we'll fire it up and see what we got. Okay. Whoops. All right, there we go. So everything's working. All the inputs are working finally. We had two bad pokies on this thing, a bad set of dip switches. Uh, let's add a credit and then start a game. Sounds good. Fireworks. But what? The problem we have now is all the motion sprites are stuck at the bottom of the screen in that one row, right above where it says next bonus at 20,000. Everything's there. Anywhere else on the screen, it's just not there. So we definitely have motion sprite issues. I've got to look up those next. Let's see. All right, program memory, play field data is all fine. The play field is what we can see up there. Everything looks good. So it's our Motion object control, I believe. And we looked at that a little bit earlier. There's not a whole lot to it. Well, there's there's a few things to it, but uh, basically everything feeds into these. There's two 157s at 9C and 10C. Uh, a bunch of signals get going there, and then it, it spits out this uh, signals called um, what are they? A ACR signals zero through three, and I believe they get fed into uh, a RAM at eleven B, which is a twenty five thirty. Oh, twenty five thirty two at eleven B. What? Eighty two S twenty five. Those are RAMs. Here's 11 and B. So they're, they're AM27 SO2s on this. There's uh, one, two, three, four of them. And um, I believe one of them's probably bad. I have to see if I have anything equivalent to a, to a 25, uh, uh, an 82S25. Huh. This is a 27SO2. Uh, there's four of them. I can pull these and test them all and see if that's what it is. Um, but I'm almost positive one of those RAMs is bad. So let me let me do some digging. It could be this 422 over here too, but I doubt. Well, I don't know. Uh, this 422, what is it used for? Well, these are the color RAMs, so that's maybe color memory. Could it be getting screwed up in color memory? I don't know. Let's look up a page. 
emulsion objects, they go through those 83s we looked at, the 157s. There's an LS86, a 174, and another 157. Those all go into picture memory. And picture memory, there is what's I'll check those signals. But picture memory gets fed into, wow, the chip at 5R. Where is 5R? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5R. M, N, oh, 5R is one of our EPROMs. This EPROM here. So yeah, I don't think it's that EPROM. So it probably is one of those little RAMs over there. I'll show you where they are. These four RAMs are right here, 11C, 11B, I think these are the two to look at first, and then there's a 10B and 10A. They're all the same. AM, 27SO2s in this case. Schematics call for a, for an 82S25. I may have some uh, some of those. Anyway, um, I'll pull out my logic probe, see how I can uh, so, see if I can test these a little bit. Well. Actually, let me look here. That's motion object and picture memory. And there's a line buffer here. What is that? Yeah, these are color memory. Maybe they're not. It doesn't make sense that they'd be stuck there. But let me take a look here. Yeah, a bunch of inputs, a bunch of outputs. Let's see. All these AC signals go into pins uh, on 10B and 11B. They go into pins 1, 13, 14, and 15. Okay, 1. 16, 15, 14, 13. Yeah, these are just color. That's all these do. These are the colors. So it's got to be Playfield RAM somewhere. Motion object select color selectors. Yeah, that looks all fine. Okay. Well, it could be these two adders, these these eighty threes. I just don't know. Okay, six H and six J has uh LS eighty threes six two three four five six H and J I don't think so. Somehow, everybody seems to love these Atari schematics. I, I like to look at the whole darn thing at one time and kind of try to follow it. But, okay, play field memory. Here's the play field memory, which are... 4K, 
for K, L, M, and N. And those we think are good because we're not getting any beep codes. All right. Trying to see if there's any counters or... Uh, They call it play field memory, and yeah, there's these two sets of, uh, well, can you see me here? No, I got to bring, I got to come out a little more. All right, there's uh, four RAMs here. Four RAMs here and four RAMs there. We have our 2114s at 2F and 2E, which are here, CPU RAM. Um, and then we have this, uh, this 93422 up here. What is it used for? I think it's color also. Oh, wait, I think, well, that's interesting. One, two, three, four, five. So let's look at this 422. Where is this on the, uh, on the schematics? I think this might be it. I'm going to look around on the schematics to see if I can find this section right in here. But I think this might be the, uh, this might be the data, um, the location data for the play field. And if it is, uh, that'd be awesome. Not for the play field, but for the motion sprites. And if it is, then uh, maybe we got a problem addressing it. I'll be back. I can't believe this. All right. I can't believe this. I took a break, I left it plugged in, came back, and the sprites are there. There's some problems. There's jumping up and down, but they're there. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> Very strange. Let's see. Turn it off, turn it back on, see what happens. Okay, they're out of, uh, oops, excuse me, they're out of circuit, but they're there. That's so weird. I just don't believe this. This is this is very strange.
You see those 100s popping up and down the screen? Well, it's better if I turn this off. You can see better on the on the, the monitor. What in the world? Hmm. Well, nothing is hot on the board. Well, maybe. Let me see, we got one hot chip. And it's a RAM. So maybe, let me hit these RAMs and see if they cool off and it goes back. difference. Oh, there we go. All right, let's see what else. Okay, my archers disappeared. So everything shifted down, or shifted up. Hmm. Boy, this is odd. Well, I'm going to turn it off and see if it goes back to what it was. Okay, I'm going to let go sit for an hour or so. Okay, I have some good news. We were able to uh, reseat the Cody proms. And um, boom, voila. So we had we had a socket issue socket issues on the uh, on the EPROMs. So we had it fixed with the pokies and the uh, And the sound amp. Very cool. Oh, and the dip switches. We had to we had to fix the dip switches. And now we've got we've got a completely working millipede board. It's the next day, by the way.
That's very cool. So in, in row one, <clears throat> there's four Cody proms. And uh, let's reset this. And I'll show you. Okay, the Cody proms are right here. So, reseated these four. And uh, everything came back. That's just so very cool. So we've replaced these four sockets. We had two bad pokies. We had a bad uh, bad dip switch. Um, and uh, some more bad ROM or EPROMs here, EPROM sockets. So I think maybe I'll go ahead and replace these four sockets and these two also. Actually, since the 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 customer wants a millipede kit on here, so we really don't need to do these, so we might not. Um, we'll just put uh, we'll just put the millipede kit on here and these two sockets and test it out, and uh, it's ready to go back. That's very cool. Yep. So let me show you. Everything stays within its boundaries now. The dragonfly stays in his in his uh, little little pattern. The inchworm and the earwig they were down two rows, and uh, everything else is just you know the bee stays in the right spot. Beetle does. Spider. Very cool. Well, thanks for watching, and we'll catch you on the next one.